like Maximus is wanting to join us. <laughs> oh, bless. Yeah. Morning, oh, Katrina. Bless. How are you? <laughs> there. Are you happy now? Oh, lovely. How cute. <laughs> is it a boy or a girl, Wendy? Boy. They're both oh. boys. Two Persians. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Like right, right, so we'll, <laughs> we'll get started this morning. So welcome to the session. Um, today's session... Uh, will be delivered by Laura and um, I'm just going to go straight into sharing my screen. Um, okay. Glasses on so I can see my notes. <laughs> right. Okay. So welcome everybody. This is session 14 uh, and today's topic is creating balance. Um, and like I said, it will be delivered by Laura. Um, Thank you for joining us today. My name is Khan, and I will be co-hosting the session with Laura. Uh, I'm the founder and the CEO of Zen PD and Education First Recruitment. Uh, we provide uh, teachers for schools and we also provide training and development opportunities for adults. Over to you, Laura. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Laura Everest here speaking. I help individuals and organizations learn to thrive and cope with the demands placed on them in today's business environment. Um, as a Gallup strengths coach and a master for resilience, I work really hard to find where you are naturally have your best opportunities for potential, look at strengths and weaknesses and figure out how best you can move forward successfully and thrive in this very difficult time. So lovely to be here with you all this morning. I'll pass back to Zen because I think we're going to do a quick introduction with everybody. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so please introduce yourself. If you could start with Mandy and then riff up, please. Uh, good morning, ladies. Uh, nice to see you all again. Um, I am Mandy and I'm co-founder of Pixel Roses. We are a makeup and photography business and uh, we specialize in creative photography but we also do zoom backgrounds <laughs> uh, just to let you know and if you need to have your brand put out there for all your zoom meetings we can create a proper background for you to use um, and we love our creative photography but also corporate branding thank you wonderful thank you mandy riff it and then joyce please Hi, Riffit. Um, I'm from Sydney in Australia. I haven't joined for a few weeks, I think just from a time perspective, but it's really good to join again today. I just head up business development and uh, marketing and branding for insurance. So I've been in insurance for a while and um, really good to sort of check in again with you ladies. Wonderful, thank you. Joyce and then Zena, please. Hi everyone, I'm Jocelyn Spears Neller and I am currently working um, with Learning A to Z and also I have a platform for women who want to age um, proactively and I'm um, happy to be here. Wonderful, Zena and then Butcher please. Hi everyone, this is Zena, I'm from um, Dubai. I'm, I'm the owner of a nursery, Creative Nest Nurseries. And I'm really interested in today's topic about balance because as a business owner, it can be really hard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bushra and then Hosseina, please. Hi, everybody. My name is Bushra. I'm the CEO and founder of Aurora Hikma. We do uh, translation and Arabic messaging. I'm very interested in today's topic because uh, I've had some trouble balancing my home and work life. So thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Hosseina and then Patricia, please. Yep, Patricia. Oh, hi everyone. My name's Patricia. I've just joined in. Um, hope everyone's well. I run a company called I have two companies actually. One's called Professional Minds, the other's Content with Words. And at the moment I'm focusing on creating content for educators and solopreneurs. And i um, interested to hear about the topic today. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to go straight into the session. Um, bear with me one minute. I think we might have other people dropping into the session. Um, yeah. as we go along of um, 
disabled the um, waiting room so they can just pop in. Okay. Okay, so today's session is on well-being and creating balance and uh, over to you, Laura. Okay, so I think, you know, this is one in all the 30 years I've had in business, I don't think I've met anyone who says that they've got the balance completely right. And honestly, truly, I'm afraid it seems to be more women who say that because women seem to feel the need, whether because we're naturally the nurturer and we are the ones that probably, you know, have the children or whatever else. We kind of take on a role that kind of wants to encompass so many things and we try to be everything for everybody. So I think it's even more challenging for females to find the right balance than anybody else. So it, today, what I'm going to do is share some things with you and I need you to think really hard in each bit that we're going to go through today. Um, what do you need? Okay, so quite a lot of introversion and thinking about where you are as you go. Okay, so next slide, please, then. All right, so this is this is done through Gallup, because obviously I'm a Gallup strengths coach and I work very hard with them. So obviously, people with thriving well being do better in life. Companies with thriving employees do better business. And Gallup finds that employees thriving in all, well, I say all the above five elements. Sorry, I've, I've slipped the slide down to the next one. So the below five elements, which I'll share with you in a minute, um, are 36% more likely to report full recovery after illness or injury, hardship, more than twice as likely to say they always adapt well to change, miss 41% less work as a result of poor health, and are 81% less likely to seek out new employment in the next year. So what I'm going to be looking at and we're going to be concentrating on is the next slide, which is, this has been after, there's lots of different things, but Gallup, which you know is the biggest argument, you know, the biggest uh, analytical company pretty much ever that helps leaders solve pressing problems. They do vast amounts of research and analytics to put their findings together. And what they recognized were these five elements were the ones that came up as the key elements of people's well-being. So this is the holistic view of what contributes over a lifetime. And the scary thing is, this is if we look at these, at these five, you've got career, which is liking what you do every day, social, your relationships, financial, our economic ability, our community, how we fit in, and our physical well-being. And the frightening thing is that although 66% of people are doing well in at least one of these areas, only 7% of people feel that they are thriving in all of these areas. So what really matters is to look at where we feel, which of these areas we feel particularly strong in. How do we utilize that in the best way for us? And to, to figure out what do we need to do in some of the other areas so that we all can have better days and months, uh, especially with the environment we're in right now. And how can we get the most out of what we need uh, for ourselves to, to feel that we are fulfilling our own personal um, objectives and feeling that we're, you know, in charge of our own well-being. Okay, so we're going to look at each one of these uh, this morning, and we're going to talk about what that means. So I might give an opportunity for you on each one of these is to pause after each one and to just think about, you know, how that works for you. Okay, so can I share the next slides then? Okay, so obviously. When we talk about career well-being, it's really about saying, do you actually like what you do every day? We can actually feel we have a purpose to do something, but we, you know what it's like. We have an idea of what we think our work needs to be about. 
And we can get sidelined with so many other things in our day that come in and take over and distract us and move our concentration and our focus. And it's really thinking, are we able to keep the balance in terms of what we do? And apparently only 20% of people can give a strong yes in response to this. And the most important thing we have to remember is what we spend our time doing each day is actually what shapes our identity. So what is it that we're doing every day? And let's be honest, we are here as working women trying to fulfill all the things. But whilst we're working women, we're also trying to run our homes. We're probably trying to be involved in outside things with our community. Maybe we're involved in, in charity. Maybe we're involved with kids stuff, with sporting events, with, with all sorts of different scenarios. How are we holding it all together? And I think what's really important, because although I run this specifically for working women, as we know, you know, I, as a, I'm really, really keen that women succeed in life no matter what they do. So when we think about well-being in our career, we could have a career that's, that's about earning a paycheck, but it doesn't need to be. It could be a vocation. It could be a, a, a specific occupation we're involved in. And that's absolutely fine. But the most important thing is we tend to, people always ask when you meet them, oh, what is it you do? It's one of the first things we ask, what do we do? And the thing is, okay, what do we do actually? Is it what we love to do? Does it align with the purpose that we want to, to share and to think about that gives our life direction? So I'm gonna ask you just for a minute, ladies, is to just take a thought of that for yourselves and to just think for a minute. When I think of what I love to do in my job role, whatever that is, whether I'm a mum raising kids only, whether I'm a working mother, as most of us I think are on this platform. When I think of my career, what matters in terms of how I want to feel career fulfilled, what am I doing every day? What percentage of what I'm doing every day is actually feeding straight into that? How much of my time am I sometimes caught out in things that don't interest me? I'm just getting dragged into certain things. Do you need that? What, what can be done differently so that you can hang on to what matters most? Before, at the very beginning of this session, as people were coming in today to start this, we were just talking about, oh my God, I'm so busy. You know, it's about time I delegated some stuff that I don't need to be doing. So think about that. Where, what is it? Sometimes we wear so many hats. Do you actually need to wear them all? I know I get caught in that. And I've just said, I, I can't wear all these hats. It's not singing to where I want my career to be going and how I want to be thriving. So I'm also thinking, gosh, Where's my balance? What matters to me in my day that I need to promote more of? And what is it that I can actually offload or get rid of? So I'm going to ask you first, ladies, on a scale of one to 10, think of the things that you've got. And, and we're going to come back and look at our scale at the end of this, when we finish this journey. So we've got five areas to consider today. Career well-being is number one. So on a scale of one to 10, how much of what do you do every day? What do you do in your job? How much do you think is what you love to do? How in control of this part of your well-being do you think you have at the moment? One to 10, one being, uh oh, oh my God, dire. And 10 being absolutely brilliant. I'm so on top of this. I can't possibly get any better. So give yourself a mark on a one to 10. And then perhaps if you can think of something that you would like to change on a personal level for your career to do more of what you want to do, can you think what that might be? And if you know what that is, just quickly make a note now. What one thing might you love to have more time to do for your career?
And then just while you're thinking of that, I'm going to just pull that out a little bit more and say that whilst I appreciate that some people here are entrepreneurs with their own business and they wear lots of hats and do it all yourselves to the most degree, think if you're beyond that, you're a business leader, think about what kind of company are you building? How are you developing your employees? Have they got the right skills doing meaningful work for them? So when you think of career well-being, when you're putting together a really great team of the people that you're working with, and it could be that, you know, how, you know, the ones mainly that you directly have impact over, what could you do? Are you sure you're addressing their needs? So career well-being falls under your bracket in terms of helping your staff move forwards. Often people, as I'm sure you all well know, because we've all been through it in our lives, that we all used to think, I know that when I first started business, my business or being in business 30 odd years ago, I remember thinking, oh, so long as I work really, really hard, my boss is going to look at me and say, oh, my God, Laura, I can see all the things you're terrific at and I'm going to make you into a star in this area. The reality is everyone's doing what they're doing every day. They're trying hard to look at everyone else, but it doesn't just fall into our laps. We've got to actually be proactive and thinking, what do I need? How do I get that across to my boss so that they can help me? She can help me do what I need to do. So just think about that. Those of you who have businesses or you have teams, what can you be doing to help them ensure their career well-being? Okay, so I hope I've given you just a bit of time to jot something. We're gonna come back and talk about this afterwards and figure out where we girls are really thriving and where we're not. So Zen, if I could ask you to turn to the next slide. So this is our social well-being now. On a scale of one to 10, how many of you know you've got really strong relationships and love in your life? And I, that's not just from our other halves, but beyond that, we need a lot of supportive relationships. It's not just one. We're, we're born to be social. We're born to be together. We're mutually dependent and we rely on others for our well-being, just as others rely on us for our well-being. So the need to belong, the need to be connected is actually fundamentally really important to all of us. So that encompasses our lifestyle, our values, our beliefs. It's about socially in our private lives, our friends, who are our tribe of girls that we go to, or could be you have a tribe of fellas that you go to, I don't know. Um, but who are your go-to people? Think of your families. How great are the relationships with them? Could be with your kids. How well are you developing social things where you can just ring a friend and say, I need to go out for coffee. Just stop and join me. Who are those people? So firstly, family, your friends. And I think, you know, one of the things here can be quite hard because particularly in this part of the world, we either find that we're lucky and that we have, we live here for a very, very long time, and we have friends who live here with, for a very long time with us. But it can also be really transient. We make some friends, and then they go, and then we've got to start over, and it can be quite hard. And we know, I, I remember, and I, from the people that I work with now who come to me for coaching, I, I'm very aware that when I first came, Dubai was, I found it to be, everyone was very nice but it was like everyone was really busy with their own lives. So although everyone meant really well, it wasn't actually all that easy to build your social community. It's got much better now because there are compounds, there are people together and there's a lot more on. But I, I'm also aware of all the platforms that I've been on on social media 
particularly over the lockdown. And people who were new, who came out to Dubai just before this, they found that they really struggled socially. And I see people kind of advertising themselves saying, hello, I'm a mum with kids. Is there any other mum out there with kids that, you know, I could be friends with? So I think it's really, really important that we, we look to who our friends are and who perhaps, you know, when we talk a bit more about community, I want to come back to that, but who do we know that might need friends that maybe we can connect people or be helpful to people because we need that. Also, I'm going to say to you, this, this goes back into our work environment. You may have a team of people that you work with. How are your relationships with the people that you're working with? Sometimes, you know, we might not be able to choose the people we work with, and it, they, some of them may not quite be our cup of tea, but how do we, we've all got to, you know, jolly along together, and none of us want to live in conflicting situations because it's draining. So how do we manage that? What are our relationships like with the people around us at work? And then many of us who are business owners as well find that we may not have teams that we are accountable for, but we work across businesses in terms of collaboration. I know that we do, lots of people do networking events and we try to build the right friendships and relationships across the board. But what else could we be doing? Are we feeling that you know we're really knowing people? I myself actually, I have, as a Gallup strength, communication is very, very high for me. But actually things like empathy and relationship building is very, very low as on a whole for me. I'm much more about influencing others and getting stuff done. But I also have to learn about how we all need relationships. So how do we, what, do, what strength do we bring to build these things? If you're not naturally somebody who looks for connections, how do you do that? What do you do? We all have strengths that can enable us to get there. It's just not everyone reaches out very openly. You know, um, we all do it in different ways. What's your style? And more than that, how do you encourage people around you to build good relationships? Remember, we talked some, some sessions back we talked about the importance of women standing together. And we kind of recognize within that, that actually women can be really good at building each other up and they can also be really good at tearing each other down. So where do we stand in that? You know, who do we feel perhaps threatened by? Do people that we work with feel threatened in other ways? So how do we feel we manage in those scenarios? What kind of can trigger us, make us anxious? So our relationships with our families, our friends, our network, our colleagues, our managers, if we've got managers at work, our social inclusion, our sense of belonging. Do we feel valued? We need to think about our role, our personal role and our status. How do we, what kind of value in a social setting do we bring to other people? Because obviously relationship is two way. What is it we bring? Now, and obviously, you know, there's been a, so many people, particularly this last year, have really struggled because of the whole COVID scenario. So you've had social isolation <laughs> because we've all had to be at home, you know, keeping our social distancing. A lot of people have done things on Zoom and we all know, God, we've all become queens of Zoom and, 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 and these social connecting platforms than we ever, ever, ever have in our lives. But, you know, how well are we keeping that up now things are open a bit? Are we still following through with people who might still feel isolated more than we think? And how do we encourage the people around us to, to keep relationships high? So scale of one to 10 girls, where are you fitting on that? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Sorry, I'm just gonna move my AC off me. It's freezing me to death. Okay, financial well-being. Now I think this one has got 
has got to fit in with how we all feel in the last year, where we know that every single business in the world has been disrupted somehow. And there are some who, if you're obviously in the sanitizing, thermometer making, uh, face masks, medical, food industry where you do home deliveries. Um, if you're in any of those industries, you're probably smacking your lips and counting your pennies. But a lot of us have not been in that lovely scenario of thinking my jar of money is overflowing and I've never felt so rich. Um, so let's just think, how do you feel at the moment? This is about having control day to day, month to month. It's about having the capacity to absorb financial shock. I think we've all had experience of that in the last year. It's really hard. Some people may feel here, ladies, that you're on track to meet your financial goals. Maybe you're putting things in place to manage them. Are you actually thinking about how you will have the financial freedom to make the choices that will allow you to live and enjoy your life as you want it? We all have a different view of what financial well-being means for us. So what does it mean to you? Only you know what it means to you. But it's really about being secure in your financial future to feel that you can meet current challenges and obligations. Scale of one to 10 ladies. And then those of you who actually are in a situation where you have your own business, you have staff, what resources are you offering your employees? How are you helping them? I mean, there are a lot of people here, as we, as we know, who earn very small salaries. And again, you know, because we've been in a situation to, to be a lot more involved on social media platforms because of the social distancing, et cetera, et cetera, remote working, I have become very, very aware of families who are really struggling, who are terrified about how they're going to manage because obviously we see prices escalating, salaries are not. Business is tricky around the world. It's not a Dubai thing. It is a global you know, issue for us all. But there are a lot of people in our community who are, who are really troubled. Think about the people perhaps who work for us in one capacity or another. You know, how do we help them? Are we helping them as into whatever way we can? You know, even, you know, I know that there are, when we think financial well-being, you know, we are all responsible for perhaps, I don't know, drivers maybe, maids perhaps, you know, gardeners, I'm not sure. These are all, you know, part of our tribe, if you like. They're all having issues. Are we being fair and responsible? Next slide, please, then. Now, community well-being. When we talk about social, obviously, that's great. We've got our friends, we've got our tribe. We hold hands with our network, we know who we are, but it's about going beyond that. It's about supporting, inspiring, it's about um, shared investment with things outside our immediate group. It could be volunteering, engaging and getting involved perhaps in the areas where we live, perhaps where our kids may be at school. Um, it could be sport. It could be a charity. To what degree do you feel you belong in your community or your communities? Many people have more than one. Do you feel that you are supported? And do you feel actually that you are adding value? I think, you know, the community well-being has mattered a lot more in the last few months as everyone has kind of felt the need to reach out to people 
in because of the social distancing. So people, you know, we were all saying, have you checked in on somebody? Are they okay? How are we doing? You know, how are they doing? But now things open up a bit. It's very easy for us sometimes to go back into, well, are they all right now? It's about me. But, it, but being part of the community is really important. And it's a, a part, a, a quite an essential part of our well-being. In fact, Gallup research says that if you can promote that deeper interaction and enhanced community focus, it actually helps us keep things in balance in terms of not getting too preoccupied with ourselves and concentrating on our own personal emotional states, but actually thinking, let's put it into perspective and let's look at the bigger group here. And I think we need community. I think we realize, you know, particularly in the lockdown, there are certain people who don't have partners, don't have kids, and have been living a lot more on their own because they've not been able to get out and about. Um, and I think, you know, um, it's important that we still remember to reach out and, and, and think of these people. Um, I think it was Winston Churchill who said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. So what kind of givers are we? Maybe you just do a book club, maybe you do sports, whatever it is, what is it you do? Scale of one to 10. And then also, ladies, if you are um, in a business where you have staff connections, what kind of things do you do to foster a sense of community through your work, through your business, within your company? Do you offer community projects? What kind of things do you do? Could you do the next slide, Zen. Right. Health. Now, we know that this month we've been looking a lot at women's health. We had that wonderful talk, you know, with the doctors and with Joyce and with all people who are talking about how we manage kind of our physical health and how our hormones and all different things can uh, affect different things. We know that actually stress is the biggest epidemic of the 21st century. That's been dubbed so by the uh, World Health Organization. We know that good health and energy is essential to keep us thriving. And it gives us what we need on a daily basis to get our stuff done. So let's look at the two things together because they're both really, really important. So obviously our mental health is going to be influenced by so many things such as stress, hormones, different stages of our life, life events that we're experiencing at the moment, relationships that we're in, whether it be with our partners and family or friends, our wider community, it's to do with family, spirituality. All these things affect our mental health. So just take a minute to think on that. As a coach, I have never worked before with so many people who are struggling with resilience and mental well-being in business, as I have in the last few months. This has been a really, really testing time for so many of us. It takes us, throws us completely out of our comfort zones because we are not in control of everything we want to do. So have a think. When you think of your mental health, what kind of areas are holding you back? Where do you know certain things don't help you? What kind of things might you be able to do? We're gonna talk about physical health, perhaps how that influences our mental health and what we can do differently. But what mental health things would you love to be more in control of right now?
Then let's go back to physical health. We know it's every, every tool, research, anything you read, everything will tell you that, you know, how we manage our physical health is so, so important. Diet, exercise, sleep, three key areas that really, really matter. We know exercise can do amazing things. I know from on a, just on a level of the fact that I've had, as I said, 17 surgeries so far over the last few years, rebuilt with metal maybe. But the, you know, every time I've gone back to see a surgeon or consultant or anyone, they've said, you know, if you weren't so physically fit, you would not have made it through this far. So you know what, it, it's, it has such a major impact on what we do. How do you manage that? How do you manage, we talked about exercise before. We've talked about diet, where do we get caught out? I know I could be an amazingly you know, sensible, healthy eater. And then at the weekend, it all goes to pot while I have a really lovely time. And then I start my week all over again, thinking, okay, let's get back on track, good intentions. Um, so what, what is it we do? We all have to enjoy our lives, mind. We can't just, you know, not enjoy. But on the other hand, how are we balancing things? You know, are we somebody that when we feel stressed, we think, oh, my days, I need ice cream. I need chocolate. I need a cigarette. Obviously, we don't, but these are conditioned responses. So we need to think, do we have a go-to that we think we might need? I think one of mine is always, I need coffee. Not quite sure. I do try to drink decaf just to ease it out. But what, what's your vice? Where do you get caught? And are you managing to keep that in check? I know people who can get very hooked on drinking things like Coca-Cola, Red Bull, you know, that energy boosting, got to get through my day thing, a bit like the caffeine. So think about what can catch you out and how can you manage it? Sleep is a really important one. It's one, unfortunately, with all my issues that I have that I never get enough of. And I would say that that's one of the key things that makes me, drains me sometimes, is, is not enough sleep. And we can underestimate that a little bit, especially those of you who are mothers, who have kids, particularly little ones. You know, how, how do you manage that? Some of you may have children that don't sleep well themselves. And then you've got to manage that and get up and do your day. How do you cope with all those things? What do you do? So obviously the two together, the physical health will affect our mental health. And our mental health can sometimes affect how we do things physically. So they're very much on par together. Are yours in harmony with each other? And just to take it again, think about how you cope with stress. We've had so much, and let's be honest, this disruption, as we know, is not going to go anywhere soon. So how do we manage all our triggers? What do we do about that? Are we good at doing that? Do we know our triggers? How do we manage them so that we can tackle our everyday activities and do them well and feel in control for the most part. And also if you, again, let's put it back into business. If you are in a business, what can you do to promote the well-being of your employees or your team around you from perhaps their physical health and probably their mental health. What do you do? What can you do? So any initiatives that you run to help people stay physically and mentally strong. Now we're just going to take this to the final slide. 
Okay, so here we are again, those five essential elements of well-being. Okay. Take a look at all those one to 10 on the scale that you've written for yourself. And just kind of highlight particularly, is there one area particularly that stands out where your life needs some more balance? Perhaps there's more than one. And even within each of the areas, is there a specific thing that you think you can do? What action will you take to make a difference to your life and to get yourself more in balance? What key things are you going to do? Just going to give you a minute to look at all those five again and think what key things can you do for yourself, perhaps do for your team if you've got a team of people around you. Remember, only 7% are thriving in all five of these areas. So what things particularly can you work on for you? Okay, so if you feel you've had the opportunity to think of this and make a note, let's, let, let's come back and discuss this now. Let's figure out, ladies, what did you think was going well for you? And what areas did you think you were really struggling with, perhaps? What can you do better? Anyone like to share something that, you know, perhaps a key finding for them? People I'll writing. Go. I'll go. Just breaks the okay. ice a little. Bit. Um, I think um, overall from this whole COVID perspective, I I think my mental health has actually been quite positive. Um, I found ways of looking at things in a positive as opposed to a, a negative or a constructive, and I think I have seen people sort of dip um in their mental health. But I've just looked at blessings of COVID. So things like being able to spend more time in my house and in my home environment where I used to feel that, you know, the weekends were all about, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and having to do something for the sake of doing it. Whereas now I can sort of go, well, actually on the weekend, I just need to stay at home and do things around the house and spend more time with the family and children. Cause you know, we are all stuck in this rat race and, and we work long hours and, you know, you, you sort of don't have time for the children. And I found that it has made me feel quite positive and also felt that you know we don't always have to be in fifth gear we can be in first sometimes or we can actually be in neutral and just sit back and for me I, I struggle with that because I am somebody that always needs to be doing something so I think if we just sort of work on some of the small blessings and one of the big things I think around that mental health is our actual health our physical health and, you know, we see how many people have fallen ill with COVID or, you know, have had tests and have, have felt anxious about being around people or going out social distancing. Mm -hmm. If we if flip it on the other side and look at the positives and we've got that good health and you've got healthy children and, you know, we've got a roof over our head and, and you know, we, you know, we, we, we're doing okay. I think that makes your mindset change a little bit. Yeah, definitely, Arifa. I think, um, and that's the key here to count your blessings um, and to overcome mental health through counting your, your blessings and actually being grateful. Uh, I know quite a few of my friends actually, you know, write a gratitude diary on a day, daily basis just to remind themselves of these small things that are actually, um, you know, that they're grateful for that others might not necessarily have. Um, Jocelyn, Mandy, would you like to add anything? I'll add. Um, I came, I guess I came to visit my husband in February and uh, I couldn't return because of COVID. And so at the point I was coming over here, we, we were waiting for his uh, probation time to be finished. And I had a few interviews for uh, being vice principal and they just didn't go so well. And so that was kind of a I was very disappointed in that. And then I had two really good interviews after that, which then COVID hit. So nothing happened quite after that. So career-wise, I think 
it's been hard for me because I've always worked and transitioning to try to do something else as far as being in the, you know, being an educator in the school when the, the nobody was really hiring vice principals at the time. And uh, so it was just really, really difficult. And I had been in the States for two years prior. And when I was in the States, I wasn't working. So I think that the two years of not working in education during that time and then coming back over here has made it more difficult for me to find a position inside a school. So, uh, so most recently I was contacted by someone from LinkedIn and they had seen my profile. And so I went through six weeks of in, an interview process and all of, all of those interviews, I made it to the third round, but it, what it did for me was it really gave me a boost because I had to go back in and I had to really study and, and be, be on it, you know, and know it wasn't in, it was a, for a tutoring company. So it was something different. So I was, uh, I had to do a lot of research as far as uh, what to say and how to answer questions and all of that. So that really gave me a boost uh, that, okay, you know, I can get back into the career, the interviewing, and I can be successful. And so I know it will happen. And so I'm just kind of, uh, kind of coming out of, I guess, my slump. And uh, so, and I'm more encouraged about that too. So that's, yep, that's career-wise, I think, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Justin. Uh, Mandy? Um, I think I just want to start by sort of touching on something that Laura mentioned during your presentation was that uh, when I was working for a big company in the UK, it was kind of a case of, well, I didn't have to think about anything. As long as I was doing my job and doing the best that I could do, that, that made me happy. But it wasn't even going to impress any of the managers or the people that I was working for, because for in, in their eyes, I was just part of a big pool of people. And as long as we're doing the job that we're getting paid to do, well, it doesn't matter how good you do it. Obviously, if you do it badly, then there will be repercussions and you'll be asked to leave. So everybody was trying to do the best that they could do. So in the grand scheme of things, you actually didn't really make a difference. You know, you weren't really noticed because you were just some little pee in the pod so to speak uh, you were just part of a bigger group of people who were doing exactly the same thing since starting our own business it's it's been a struggle I mean we're a very new business and it kind of made me realize the implication for me was that you have to actually pay attention to one another and what we do and how we do it and we know there's only two of us we don't have any other employees um, but to, to do the best at what we do and to try and encourage each other can sometimes be really difficult especially working at home together as I'm sure we're all in the same situation um, not having employees makes us concentrate more on one another can I support Alan how does he support me? Can we support one another? Encourage one another to do the things. It was one of the things that you mentioned about physical health um, and mental health. The physical health side of things, I think I'm really good at. Um, that to me has always been a given. Uh, it's the mental health that I struggle with a little bit because I'm one of those, I'm a bit like a, a tortoise or a turtle. When things go really bad, I just want to go into my shell and sleep so where Laura struggles a lot with her sleep because of pain and uh, other things that happen I tend to take the other route and I just if I sleep then I think I don't know if it's a mental thing but then I think to myself well when I wake up maybe things will just be a whole lot better and we know that they're not going to be like that it takes dedication commitment uh, social standing as well, the social side of things, it all counts towards helping your own business. Um, I, I try and get involved with the community that we're living in here. It's a bit different to trying to push the business side of things, but just being part of the community, letting yourself be known that you're there. Um, and even at the gym, 
being on the physical side of things there are people there who struggle and it, it just, just comes out of me I am one of those people I will go up and I'll help somebody if I see that they're struggling to do something and I'm really quick to try and be supportive of other people who I can see even mentally are struggling um, the financial side of the financial well-being is obviously a big issue for us because we are only two of us and it kind of makes us sit back and think we can't go out to brunches every Fridays. We can't go out and just spend willy-nilly anymore. We have to think about because this little business is the only way that we're generating an income. We have to really sit down, knuckle down, work at this business and just tighten the purse strings because we can't do that kind of thing. But when we do actually go out and when we have people around like we did over the weekend, it means the world to us because we've actually, we appreciate it so much more, you know, doing little things like this on a Sunday morning or another one that I do on a Wednesday. It means so much because it's, I'm communicating with other people other than Alan, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so this means a lot to me. This is a community to me and it yeah. means a lot. Wonderful. To me. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that because that was that was quite deep. And, and I like that you said that, you know, you have to um, go to sleep and everything looks like it's going to be better. That's actually stepping away from the situation. Uh, often you need to step out of it to look back into it and look at, OK, this is what we were doing and this is how we can make it better. I often find that in my business that when it's getting too much um, in terms of the workload or the pressure, I have to take an afternoon off or take you know, a day off and spend that either going to have a coffee by myself, leaving the laptop at home and not working and stepping away from the business so I can then come back into the business with a fresh mind. Uh, because sometimes you can get so engrossed in the day-to-day, -day, the grind uh, of the day-to-day -day work, um, you know, supporting your partner all the time um, that you don't take that time for yourself. Um, so even if it's just for a walk by yourself, try to do things without Alan <laughs> because it really helps. You need to um, you know, you need to take that step away and just focus on yourself for a short while, uh, you know, a couple of afternoons, um, sorry, a couple of hours a, a week, uh, you know, where you just take yourself off, uh, just go for a walk and give that time to yourself because that will really help you, uh, and help you realign and refocus, uh, in terms of what you want to do as well, because it is hard, it's difficult. Um, and men struggle as well. That was, that was the, the next point that I wanted to raise that we, we often speak about women struggling um and you know unable to cope with the pressure and, and finding that balance but men also struggle um and because they are the alpha males they they often um struggle to talk about it especially with us uh, as women because we're supposed to be the ones that they are protecting um we, we are supposed to be the ones that, that that need the you know the caring person looking after us uh, and men often struggle so um it's hard it's difficult um Laura, what do you think about that in terms of men uh, and how men cope with stress? I think actually, funnily enough, I think on the whole, women are able to manage things better than men. Um, I think probably because that we are aware that we are, we have we have this nurturing thing, whether we choose to use it or not. We were, you know, we are the nurturers from the cavemen sense and even then when we run our own business and do things we're kind of we have I'm sorry we are naturally more in tune with our emotional intelligence than men tend to be I'm not saying that not everyone learns it and I'm being quite general but usually women can cope with more things than men I mean didn't they haven't they said if men had to have actually give birth there would no, be no more mm -hmm. population um mm -hmm. you know so the point being that, that I think we are we are more able and men do find it harder because yeah it's very much that I'm the, I'm the I'm the man and this is what I do and they do find it on the whole harder to talk about and share their situations women are m far more likely to get it out which is a really I think a great thing and it's it, this is why opportunities like this where we can share and talk and you need your community you need people around you to be able to to, to do this and to help each other through. But women yeah, are better something, than yeah, and something that just came to my mind then was, if any of you are struggling and we can help you in any way, 
be it via the WhatsApp group, if you want us to share any information, any promotions that you've got going on, um, you know, you need any help with anything, do reach out because uh, Laura and I, we can post information for you. We can share with our network. Um, if you've got any promotions going, use us as a community, um, you know, to benefit you and, and to help you because that's what we're here for. If you don't ask, we, we don't know um, that, you, that you require our support. So just please, um, you know, don't be embarrassed uh, at all. Don't feel that you can't reach out. We are here for you. We're here to help and we'll help in any way that we can. Um, we, we spoke, um, you know, about, you know, business owners and managing yourself. What about your teams? If you're responsible um, for a group of people, for a team of people, their salaries, um, you know, their, their visas, um, keeping their families, um, you know, going, how do you, how do you manage that um, in terms of finding balance, not just for your own well-being, but finding, helping them with their well-being, but then also helping them financially? Gislan, are you there? We lost I am here, but give me like uh, five minutes. Can you give me five minutes and I will comment yes. on this? Yes, we'll, 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 come, we'll come back to come that. Come back to me. Thank yes. you. I, we'll go to my next point, which is where can people go to find friends? So we have our community. Uh, we have our networking sessions. How can we find our tribe that we can socialize with? Uh, Laura? And may, may I just add to that? Because you know what? I had never, you know, I've been here 13 years. And, you know, I know I have close friends and I have friends who I know that I can go to and, you know, naturally being, you know, high communicator, I never normally have problems chatting to anybody or with anybody. Um, but I have recognized that there are a lot, a lot more people here in Dubai who are not in that position. Um, a lot of people. I had absolutely no idea. And I have to say, I, I felt heartbroken for some of these people who are saying I don't know I've got kids mm -hmm. and I don't part you know there's school but there's remote distancing and no one's really being friendly so I think this is a really really important one to consider right now and yeah. there must be people here on our community who must be feeling that at the moment I'm, I mean so I'm quite social um, and I lived in Qatar for what, five years before I came here and in Qatar, I had loads of friends, um, even though I was like, we were living on a, a Qatar Airways co compound, not to generalize anyone, but most of my friends were, were pilots' wives, so they were not working. They were at home with the kids and I was working. So I would still find time to socialize with them after work. Whenever they had coffee meetups, I would go along. It was all after work, I couldn't take the afternoon off. Then here in Dubai, I really struggled to find uh, my tribe. And it's only this year that I made close friends because I was working so hard um, and my husband, my best friend, he was, he was the one that I was socializing with. I, we weren't working together. He was the one I was chilling with after work. I didn't have time for any other friends because the business took so much of my time or the businesses took so much of my time. This year, um, I've actively um, made, built these relationships and, and given my time because that's what you have to do. You can't expect somebody to come to you and say, uh, okay, I would like to be your friend and you know, you come and see me. You have to actively make an effort to connect. And I've made some lovely friends uh, and it has been through networking, um, you know, and, and going out and, uh, and actually making that time for others um, and giving back to the community. And that's enabled me to, to have some lovely friends. Um, and it's the first time that I feel like, oh, I've got some lovely friends. Uh, and, it, and it feels nice. It's, it's a nice, warm feeling that you can pick up the phone and have a chat. And this all happened through COVID. This actually, we built these relationships through COVID uh, and then post, well, not quite post, but, you know, after lockdown, uh, we have then actively started meet, meeting. And Gisland did something lovely uh, a few nights ago. She uh, invited a few friends out and um, she didn't tell us that we were all going to be there. And it, and it was really nice arriving uh, and seeing everyone there. We were actually staying out till one in the morning. <laughs> I know she's here now. Um, Gisland, over to you. Yes, so here you can see me now, sorry. Yes. I'm actually at the salon doing my hair because I have a photo shoot at 10.30 with uh, Alan. Oh, <laughs> so this is, this is what we call multitasking. Yes. <laughs> so just to go back to your question, uh, really what helped me uh, through my business is mindset. Uh, because as you said, I mean, having employees and having to pay salaries, it was very tough uh, in the beginning of, uh, of the pandemic. 
And for me, the only way how I was carrying uh, forward is to think that there is still business out there. I was just not believing that there is no more business and that the hospitality was dead. No, I was sitting up and trying to find solution, you know, to find a solution for the clients at that time, what they were looking for. And that made me uh, think outside of the box, think positively, uh, find what my clients need during that period, which we were able to do sanitizing and all this stuff. And we did some nice business and we were able to continue till hotels were coming back to normal. And then we start going back to the old uh, product uh, range. So the, uh, the, the thing here is that there is two ways to think about it. Either that's it. There is nothing, there's nothing we can do. Um, close the business, go for a holiday for two years, <laughs> you know, or no, think about it that what is, uh, what are the possibilities out there that can benefit, so that can, I can benefit from. And this is what made me go through this period and continue, to be honest. So mindset, uh, finding a solution, finding through this hard time, you know, what are the things that we can do? Because there is always business somewhere. Always the yeah. business. Maybe today I don't deal with hotels, I deal with residential. But for me, it's business. Whether I'm sending a play to a hotel or a bed linen to a hotel or I send it to a private home, why not? For me, it's business at the end. So it's just to open the mind that there is business out there and just the way to find it. Then everything comes very easily. When I start thinking that the business is out there and I start differently you know doing networking with the interior designers i start meeting people who are dealing with those clients and automatically i start getting those clients it was just tweaking you know just a little bit but it takes a lot of effort to do that and this thanks i mean maybe because i'm anyway a personal dreamer i'm always positive and dreamer so maybe this is mm -hmm. something in my personality that helped me to go through this uh, but again the community also helped a lot uh, friends talking uh, my husband had really a great support to me and uh, ladies i mean talking to friends who then laura i mean all the people around the community you know thinking outside of the box and finding solutions don't give yeah. up i mean we don't give up it's okay yeah. i mean things are bad for everyone uh, but thanks to that, uh, I was able to continue with my team and uh, they are still here. We're still continuing. And we've pivoted. I mean, people are saying pivoting. I mean, we pivoted three times, you know, we, we <laughs> added new products, we added different clients, and then we went back to our clients with our original product. It was like a year of, you know, complete transformation. And this is because we want to be there. We want to be there, COVID or not COVID. We are there and that's it. Yeah. This is what and I thank decided. you, thank you for that, Gizlan. And nice. that was my, thank you. That, I, I was mentioned. I was going to mention that that uh, I know Fiona said that if anyone mentions the word COVID or the word pivot, I'm going to start finding them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and it, it, it's, it's it's really nice to hear you say that the fact that you've adapted to the needs of your client, be it if you're on your own business or you're working for somebody, um, you have to adapt to the situation. And that ad Definitely. adaptability is the thing that will make you unique and believe in exactly. yourself, believe in your own abilities, believe in what you're doing. Uh, and this will help you get to where you need to be. Um, I, I know that it's often, um, you know, I always I do some interview techniques training with people and I say, okay, you will be asked at your interview probably that tell me about a time when you overcame a challenge, COVID-19, um, you know, and adapting and pivoting and uh, maneuvering around the situation, actually getting out of bed and carrying on, um, mm. you know, is a key example for you to be able to use because we have been through so much in this last year. Um, yeah. And, you know, 2021, and we're looking forward to you arriving. <laughs> and, and this is why, if I can go back and say, you know what, the, the thing is that we're saying this, but of those five essential elements of well being, only 7% feel that they're thriving in all the areas. So even, I think it's really important to recognize where, which bits we feel we're thriving at. COVID is, we all know it's kind of made a lot of impact in our lives in ways we would prefer that it hadn't. But also it does give us an opportunity to just kind of reflect and think, uh-oh, where am I right now? You know, is this working for me? Is it not? What can I do? And there are some things to accept that I think, you know, the financial one has probably hit everybody 
pretty much all of us in one form or another. Um, it will get better. You know, there's that saying, this too shall pass. It always does. We just have to hang fire. And I think some people, you know, particularly if your business is newer, it's going to probably take a little longer to get there. But it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. But again, it's just coming back and looking at each of those five elements and thinking, where am I in this? Do I have my social connections? Am I, you know, as, as we're saying, when we've got friends, it doesn't it make the world feel nice? You know, community, we've got this. We have this lovely network, you know, what else are we doing? Um, you know, I know that every now and again, I there is um, an amazing place, the name of which I've forgotten now, in, in Jamira One, where um, they collect, they do things and they, they help with laborers and charities and things. And, you know, they say, please, if anyone's got clothes or they've got some food bits and they give you a list of things, you know, and, and I, I try to go down and do that. I have to say that, you know, one of my give backs every year used to be at Ramadan time. I used to be very involved in the Ramadan fridges and I was forever stocking them until I would see people that I could see were not in a situation to need it, who were happily going in and helping themselves to the biscuits and the fruit. And I thought, oh, no, 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 that's naughty. It's not for you. So now I try to take it somewhere where I know that they're either going to get a, people are going to get a meal or get the packages or get the things that they need. This is just something that, you know, I try to do for community. I think I found that when my children were young and they were at school, there were a lot of school initiatives. And so you could do, you know, get your box for this and do your thing for that. But if you don't have kids or like me, my, I've got one at school, but very grown up now, you know, that those things don't happen so much, but it's still important that we balance and we do give back. So it's what do we, where can we get involved to help? Who in our community is suffering or, or needs help? As Zen was saying, you know, for God's sake, if there's anybody in our group that feels that they, you know, they haven't got friends or they haven't, they don't know people. I know one or two people have reached out in a, in a little way, anything at all. This is what we do, girls. We're supposed to be here to help each other. So please, please reach out if there's anything any of us can do um, in, in that way. But it's other things, you know, what else? Take a look at your thing now. What area are you really confident in? Which bits do you think, yeah, I'm thriving in that? But then um, what areas are you not and what what are you going to do girls that's my key thing i love to see that you've got an action to do something differently so you feel in control what what key thing really stands out to you to do differently laura do you have to thrive in all the areas would you what would you say everyone needs to, to get to create balance you should be thriving in all of them yes okay. you know okay. none of us are ever going to get the balance perfect you know you think about being on a seesaw unless you're not moving it's really hard to get it quite right, but we can live pretty much in a, in a harmonized scenario if we look at all these areas. So we need to try and get the percentages fairly well, because if we're totally concentrating in one area, we're letting a lot of things go. So for example, you know, so you were saying Zen at one point, you know, your work was completely on track. You had to be very focused, but then your social life suffered, possibly your community life a bit, maybe your mental health, you know, because you're not able to get that balance because you're so driven in one area. I know for me, I'm very driven and I, I have to sometimes tell myself, balance, Laura, come on, think. And I have to pull myself up about it to do things. Um, it does make an incredible difference if you could feel that other parts are in order too. It's, it's, a, it's a real, yeah, it's a comfort. So girls yeah. think, what area stands out for you? What do you need? What area do you think you want to make the most change in? Yeah, yeah. I think the, the one with, um, with the physical health and the, and the physical health is, I think, linked to the, your mental well-being as well. If you physically feel fit, you, you're going out, you're exercising. Uh, mentally, you will feel more healthy as well. So I think taking that time out for yourself, because often um, we feel guilty to take that time out for ourselves and actually step out for a walk or step, go to the gym. I make sure that at least three times a week, I'm, I've got that in my timetable. You know, if I go to the gym or go for a run, there's something that I do. Often I go first thing in the morning before I leave for work. Um, but, that, but I know that I've done that bit of, you know, that bit of exercise for myself. 
uh, and for my own well-being and it gives me a really good start to the day uh, or to the end of the day in terms of switching off from work so take that time for yourself without feeling guilty and I know it is hard um, not everyone is lucky enough to have anyone um, to look after their children um, you know or their husbands might not be home until late or they might be uh, be away um, but do try and schedule in that time for yourself um, and even if you you don't have to take the kids with you and have to go for a walk um, but make sure that you take that time out to get some physical exercise in um, and I know the, the Dubai fitness challenge is going on as well isn't it was it 30 days um, yep so Mandy's put it gets the endorphins going um, what we got uh, you become more productive you do um, and it's like um, often I, I think when you get so engrossed in the day-to-day -day work that you're doing taking that step away taking that time to exercise focusing on yourself giving yourself that time uh, really makes a difference um, you know even if you are like Gisland going to get your hair done for a photo shoot <laughs> um, you know th these small things really make a difference um, so and, and these are investments in yourself be it exercise you know be it going to get your hair done getting your nails done if you've got that luxury um, these are little bits of investments in yourself um, and reading as well I know Laura has some great books to, to recommend um, I think I'm reading the, the Dale Carnegie book at the moment with uh, how to make friends and uh, influence people uh, and I really found it, it so interesting um, I'm reading it in small bits so I try and schedule in half an hour of reading every single day um, but it really helps you um, improve your improve your profession uh, and not just professionally it helps you improve personally as well because those same tips and tricks you can use when you're talking to your husband uh, you know, and uh, and you're get about to get into an argument you, you know you know what to do now um i, I yes. have to, I have to say on that to say that you know what when we talk about for me you know that i i've had 17 times where i've had to go back go back into surgery go back into another cast have more operations on my legs and and other bits as well um and it is very very difficult to bring yourself back up again every time but you know that's why with that and all the um the positive psychology and all that i've studied and strengths you know that's why i i really have become quite a master in resilience but i have to say it is a constant you have to make that effort and you have to do and you, the balance it matters i exercise every single day because for me, I'm in so much pain. Sometimes it helps with the pain, but but it, it actually it, it, there is there is obviously it releases all the right endorphins. It makes you feel better and it relaxes you, even though at the time it's hard. So whatever your thing is, to, you know you you do need to build a physical workout, but also whether you you're somebody that practices mindfulness, gratitude. There's a lot of people, yep, yeah, who do meditation. All these things are brilliant for your for your mental health. One of the things I also do, um, I mean, I'm I'm a cook, and I you know I'm, I'm always baking and making. And so if I need thinking time, and I've got something big in my you know going on, and I think I need I need time out. I've done my sport, but I need to really think about this. I'll often go into the to the kitchen and I'll be busy. And while I'm there, I'm working through the problem. So, you know, we all have different ways of doing it. Um, you know, what what is it you do? Um, also, talk about reading. I mean, I'm actually doing the opposite. I'm writing a book on resilience at the moment. I feel I'm very, very qualified to be talking about it. Um, and I'm doing that at the moment. And I have to say that just even putting it down then re-looking at some of the strategies that I've been using and looking at the things I'm doing it's actually reminding me oh yeah that's very good yeah it's a good thing I do that or you know whatever so do think of what you use what what helps you um turning your laptop off is a really important one shutting things down not looking at it um I think that's very very important um to be able to get cut off and and do yes. stuff I think your phones, your phones, another one as well. If you you're constantly checking emails, uh, I'm really bad for like my phone. It's just there, and the emails are coming through, or the messages, and I'm constantly uh, answering on there. So just taking that time out. Sometimes I have to lock it in a cupboard, just put it away so it's out of mind, uh, out of sight, out of mind. Um, you know, if if I don't look at it, I won't think of it, and I have to physically train my hand to like, <laughs> no. Um, but this is how work can can take over and where you you can't find that balance 
So it's about everything in proportion, having scheduled time for everything, timetabling, uh, and ensuring that you that you're finding that work balance. Okay, so I'm just going to go over to um, our information part of the session now. Um, Laura, over to you. Right. Well, obviously, you know, this is a time through COVID, as I said, uh, although I'm writing and doing many things with teams, actually helping team resilience um, at the moment. But I'm still getting a lot of leaders, a lot of people coming to me concerned about where next, what am I doing? I think, you know, how do I how do I want to progress forwards? So, you know, if, if you want a, a little bit of thought in that direction or particularly with regard to our chat today, um, you know, if anyone's feeling in this community that they're not thriving in one of those well-being areas, please, please come forth and share. You don't have to kind of, you know, tell the whole community. But, you know, Zen and I are always happy to, to be speaking with somebody. So please, please message us if you need it. Excuse me, apologies. I'm having some technical difficulties here with, um, let me just stop my share. Okay, thanks for that, Laura. Um, and same as, as Laura said with myself, it, we're happy to help with anything, um, you know, that you need support with. Um, we're here to guide, we're here to, to support you. We, I provide um, many e-learning trainings and qualifications, happy to have a chat. Uh, we also do some team building activities. So if you have a team and you're looking for team building, do reach out. Um, I'm going to stop my screen share because I'm struggling with this at the moment. There's something wrong with it. Um, Okay, um, so, um, yes, Laura? No, finish, sorry, I'll finish uh, in a minute. You go. Oh, look at Gisland's hair, amazing. Glamorous, very glamorous. Oh, glamorous Thank you. Ah. <laughs> All good look, for the shooting. <laughs> oh, it looks lovely, amazing, look gorgeous. Thank you, um, thank you. Interestingly enough, next week's session is going to be on uh, beauty, women's uh, beauty and uh, linking it back to health. Um, so please do, do join us for that session in two weeks time and um, do reach out to myself and Laura if you have any questions, if you want to deliver any sessions, we've got the calendar planned up until January, so uh, beyond January if you want to deliver a session do let us know, um, do comment on our social media, share the links with your friends and we look forward to supporting our community. Over to you Laura. Yeah I was just going to say that you know since I've reached out and asked if people were interested in, in a newsletter and I've had a lot of positive responses back. So uh, this is something, you know, when I said of wearing all the hats, I'm actually going to have somebody helping me get this together. And so some of these key things like the five elements of well-being and all these things, I will be including and sending out in, you know, in, in, in newsletters down the line so that you've got something just back to refer to um, if you're interested in that. So, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sorting that, ladies. Uh, it's, it's one of the next things on my list whilst I'm in the, still doing my book writing and, and other things. Um, and I obviously do run short online courses as well, but um, you know, we'll be uh, looking at those for people who might be in need of anything particularly. But if you are interested in doing a session uh, to share what you know and, and how we can all, you know, as, as a community together, support each other, please, please, do say, always happy. We've already, for the people that we've had on, it's been fantastic, um, uh, great sharing. So if any, you're all experts. If anyone's got something, do let us know. Um, and we'll look forward to that. Gislaine, we hope you have a fantastic shoot this morning. You're yes, looking do, share, do share the Thank pictures you. with us as well. Of course. And, um, don't forget <laughs> the video you, for the session. We'll be sending out the video for the session as well. So Thank um, you what you want to share please feel free to do so have a lovely couple of weeks and we'll catch up with you in two weeks time absolutely happy day thank girls thank Enjoy. you have a good okay. day bye. 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 bye 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 bye